Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And he's going to talk about stiff uh, physics informed neural networks. Um, Becky, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm Weiqi, um, and I'm postdoc working with uh, Professor Silidon. And uh, today I'm very happy to uh, share our work on uh, so enabling uh, physics informed neural networks uh, for stiff chemical kinetic problems. And so a lot of work I actually done with our two undergraduate students last summer, uh, Will and Zhu. And so they also got offered from a graduate school this year. And also worked with Sal from the uh, uh, um, University of Michigan. Um, yeah, so uh, this morning session, uh, so Chris has to give a great overview um, how on the stiffness of uh, issue and how it's changing today's data driven modeling. So yeah, I, I will start with uh, to talk about like what uh, we focus on is the stiff chemical kinetic problem. And um, so the reason that we uh, look into this kind of system is because it's uh, almost everywhere on the earth. Um, to, to name some example that I uh, work on as uh, energy convergence, including those combustion engines and also uh, so, uh, battery and fuel cells. And also, uh, so, ke so on chemical, understanding the chemical reactions is essential for climate modeling. Uh, so it's because uh, so the gas that emitted from like a car are not necessarily harmful, uh, but the, the gas can react with other gas um, in the air and the convert it to a uh, greenhouse gas. So that in order to project how that human activities uh, impact the climate, we, uh, so it's very necessary to understand how those uh, species are reacting with each other in the air. And also another very big field is uh, the biolog biolog uh, biological system, for example. So the cell, uh, in living system communicate with each other. It's actually uh, by kinds of chemical reactions. So the reaction among uh, our DNA, RNA, and the proteins. And so the so uh, so modeling chemical reactions is actually very challenging due to kind of curse of dimensionality in the state of verbal space. So here is an example, which is the chemical reactions happens uh, in the combustion of methane. So methane, so it's actually the, the, the second source of uh, US energy production this year, I think. So it's actually the most simplest hydrocarbon fuel comparing to other gassing of uh, diesel fuel. Uh, but although it's uh, very simple, uh, so its combustion actually involves hundreds of species, and those hundreds of species interact with each other through thousands of reaction steps. Uh, so there's a complex, uh, uh, there's a high dimensionality, uh, so introduced to challenges for both experimental diagnostic and the numerical challenges, which is uh, the stiffness. So um, from the uh, experimental diagnostic uh, so perspective, so the challenge is that, uh, so first of all, it's usually very difficult to measure those species because those species are usually happening only like for combustion, it's only existing at high temperature. If we take this gas and cool it down, it actually changes. And same for the biological system, if we kill a cell, and the mayor it, it also changes its compositions. And, and still, although still we can buy some expensive leather equipment to mayor this uh, uh, system like this uh, flame, uh, so usually those kind of equipment call, cost around like half a million. And this equipment only works for a, a specific species. And if we want to measure thousands of species, we have to buy thousands of leather equipment, and I, so no lab will do that actually. And this is why the physics from neural network is so promising for uh, for a chemical reacting flow modeling, uh, which has so P has been talked about so many times in this workshop, 
And this is especially promising for inverse problems as demonstrated in the Navier-Sox equation uh, that using this framework, you can inference the unknown scalar field from a known scalar field. So it's, this is essentially something we really need uh, for modeling chemical reaction systems that we can only measure very limited information uh, due to the complexity, uh, but using PIN, it has the potential to inference those unknown species based on known species. Um, but the key question is whether this PIN uh, do can handle the challenges for chemical reaction system. So this uh, comes to uh, the, the challenges for, uh, for chemical kinetic modeling uh, from a conventional numerical perspective. And uh, so, uh, so Chris has mentioned stiffness in many kinds of physical system. And for chemical reaction, uh, it has a specific definition is that uh, to measure the time scale separation and the, you, we have some species that uh, reaction uh, change very fast and some change very slow. And if the ratio of the time scale is over than 1,000, we usually call this system with stiff. And they, so this is a, sometimes difficult to measure and it has a more practic, a practical definition is if we put, use the non-stiff OD star, uh, it fails, then we say this stiff, uh, system is stiff. And they, then we have to use a sophisticated solver like uh, from civil and also from a differential equation Julia uh, uh, ecosystem to solve it. Uh, but in general, solving stiff system is expensive. And uh, uh, so today we are going to, so the usually people use a classical benchmark problem to test if a solver really can uh, handle stiffness. Like today, we are going to use those two classical problems. And here the, is the example of Robertson's problem. So we have uh, the first and the third species uh, uh, so evolve very slowly, but we have the second species evolve really fast. So it's a uh, recent it's equilibrium around 10 minus two seconds, but the overall integration time is actually at uh, 100,000. So then uh, we actually have kind of scale separation uh, in the order so 10 uh, uh, power nine. And this is kind of also, we can also see this stiffness from those model parameters. So we see that we have a reacting rate has uh, in the order of 10 minus two. And in the meanwhile, we also have a reacting rate in the 10 power seven. So then this essentially makes this system as very stiff and almost all of the non-stiff solver will fail in this system. Yeah, so then we do a very uh, a simple test to see whether a regular pin uh, method work on this kind of stiff system. Um, so, uh, so we, so since it's an ordinary differential equation, we only take the time as input. Then this neural network produces uh, uh, the concentration of three species. And with that, we can compute the residuals. And by minimizing the residuals, then uh, we are hoping to get the solution to this uh, system. And uh, so we actually use a pretty large neural network. Uh, so th the reason is that uh, this is system although only has three species, but it has a very long integration time window. Uh, so in that sense, it's actually quite a complex. So that we use a, a, a three hidden layers with a, a more than 100 nodes per layer. And we use a 2,500 data points. And the, in addition to those, we also incorporate so recent techniques to accelerate the convergence. Like we use adaptive loss functions uh, among those residuals for different species to handle the imbalance among those species. And we also encode the initial conditions into the neural network architecture so that we don't have to explicitly minimize the loss for the initial conditions. And then, so although we tried a lot of tricks, but it still doesn't work. And so this is a red line instead of the ground truth using stiff OD solver. And this green dust line gets from the pin. 
So the issue is not because it's not the accuracy instead it doesn't work at all in such kind of system. And to give an overview, so we use some technique to make the work positive system uh, with this uh, blue lines. Uh, so I will talk the details. Um, so uh, so because before talking uh, how we make the work, and so as Chris, uh, Chris mentioned this morning, uh, so Paris has a very nice paper uh, to look at the stiffness issue from the gradient dynamic perspective. Uh, so essentially we can view the stochastic gradient distance as a, an explicit older uh, forward master in the parameter space and in such a way. And so, so in this uh, analysis, the, the physical system is actually not stiff, but still, since uh, uh, we need a loss function for different components, like uh, for example, the residual and the boundary condition, and those loss functions could be imbalanced and lead to the uh, gradient dynamics as stiff then so makes the, uh, the training using a stochastic gradient descent uh, being challenging. Uh, so although those analysis are so based on non-stiff system, but still, uh, so it's a hint that uh, the reason that the team doesn't work on those stiff chemical reaction system is because of stiffness. So, uh, we did a hypothesis test driven uh, to uh, approach to 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 uh, to test uh, uh, this uh, uh, gas. So um, so first of the hypothesis the failure is mainly due to the stiffness. Uh, then we go back to classical numerical method in handling stiffness to see um, like uh, so to see if we can build an equivalent system that is not stiff and to see if a pin can work with it. So, uh, so uh, there's a classic, uh, a class many method that can uh, remove the stiffness of original differential equations. And we, we use a, a something called a quality steady state assumption. And so the idea is that since we have a slow evolving species and a faster evolving species, and we can assume those fast evolving species, uh, it's net production rate as zero. And then we, are, we can actually convert, remove this differential equation and uh, express its concentration as an algebraic equation. Um, so then this uh, uh, original stiff OD is actually reduced to a non-stiff differential algebraic equation if we are lucky. And uh, so, uh, so uh, the benefit is actually uh, is that uh, this uh, reduction does not reduce the accuracy marks. So you can see this y1 and y3 are accurately approximated. Uh, for the fast evolving species y2, we do see some uh, errors at the indu induction period, but this is actually in practice, it's, uh, it's really doesn't matter because what we essentially care about is those uh, uh, slow evolving species. That's also why we simulated the system so long time. And uh, so, and also we can use an uh, explicit solver to solve this system, which is in generally faster than stiff solver. And so uh, this is a, actually a pretty old method or existing for over 100 years, uh, but it's so powerful and so, so it's actually still widely used in modern turbulent combustion simulations, uh, so which is run in the supercomputer in the exascale and also pattern scales. So uh, that's the general idea of uh, QSA. Then uh, we uh, figure out how do we encode this QSA into the pin framework. So uh, the idea is that in the neural network side, we only predict the slow evolving species, and then we approximate those faster evolving species using a QSA module. And, uh, on, and a very important thing is that we also ex exclude the loss for the faster evolving species from the loss function, although we can do that, but we have found that it's very, it's very useful to exclude them. And uh, and with those uh, uh, approximation, then we can see uh, we apply it to the first test problem, the Robinson problem. 
Uh, so from the loss function, so we say if we don't use this uh, uh, so stiffness remove, we get the loss function say at very high value, even when change for a very long time. But with that approximation, we can actually quickly go to the loss below 10 minus three. And uh, so also as mentioned before, it uh, approximates the solution pretty well uh, for the slow evolving species and also for the later stage of the faster evolving species. Um, so that's one with three species and we also test in our uh, in the uh, pollution model with uh, 20 species and 25 reactions. And so this system is, is certainly it has 20 dimension to be much uh, so much more challenging actually. And it's the rate constant also varies in a very wide wide so it's more than 13 uh, 14 um, orders of magnitude. Uh, so in this last left table is the red constant. And also, it's also is associated with uh, the species concentration is actually also various, you know, uh, many orders of magnitude. And this is also another challenge uh, for dealing with the stiff system. And similarly, so if we use a regular pin, so uh, it gets, gets some re uh, the results looks like this. And with this uh, uh, QSA approach, um, we can approximate most of the slow evolving species pretty well. So although there's some uh, still some there's some errors for certain species, uh, we uh, so think it's due to um, the, the change is that to, to manually derive the QSA assumption for 20 species system uh, is actually not easy. And uh, we are not able to uh, so, so set uh, all species that we want as a QSA species. So that, that's something that we can uh, handle in the future. Um, so so, uh, so at, at finally, I want to uh, note that uh, this is stiffness since it's not it's it's actually not an issue for pin. It's actually pretty general for many neural network based data driven method uh, because it's associated with optimization. Um, so we take an example that this acute SA concept is actually also works for other methods like uh, a neural ordinal differential equation. Um, if we use a regular neural network to train it, so we basically get something that looks like this. Uh, although we have some recent work that can make this uh, uh, much better. Uh, but, uh, so we can directly apply this uh, QS into this kind of system and get a very nice results. And, and also, um, so there's also literature that mentioned that the change, the stiffness also changing for reduced auto modeling. And uh, I believe this approach also helps there. Um, so finally, the take home message is that, uh, uh, so the pin seems uh, uh, difficult to handle stiffness and uh, stiffness removal seems to be a, a wild option to uh, deal with stiffness. And um, so, um, but I have to mention that although uh, we have shown it works on those system, um, there's also other challenges that uh, could arise as uh, uh, so we know for, from conventional uh, so CFD solvers, like the coupling between the reactions and the energy equation, also the diffusion process. And so, uh, so lastly, we, uh, so many of the detail you can find from uh, the uh, paper on archive and also the code implemented in PyTorch on GitHub. Yeah, so thanks for, yeah, that's my, end of my uh, 